switch gears again. I want to go to um, what I think are some of the um, former leadership names in the stock market, and then I'm going to go into some of the what I think are the new leadership names in the stock market. I'm going to save that part for last. So let me go into some of the uh, let me go into some of the former leadership names. Um, you know, Apple Computer. I'm just going to post a couple of readings here. Um, Apple Computer. Apple is owned by every single portfolio manager on Earth and two other planets, probably. Um, I don't know who else could own it. Sometimes that's all it takes for a stock to start coming down. But one of the things that's happening with Apple is that it's rare that you have a stock that continues higher as leadership where the PE is shrinking. Usually a stock is continuing its run and the PE stays expanded. Okay? So with Apple, the PE has been shrinking over the last couple of quarters. So that's why I'm viewing this last base, let's call it, you know, on a daily basis. I'm viewing that uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple maybe breaks out to new high and then that's its that is its high. That that would be a false breakout. I'd be aware I'd be wary of that. That the one reason is that the shrinking PE, but the other reason is based on that chart I just had up before, which is right here now, is that we have a monthly 13 cell on Apple. Just so happens we have a monthly 13 cell on Fari's favorite restaurant. He goes to get a burrito every day at Chipotle. Okay. There is a fundamental change happening at Chipotle. They are opening up their Asian-themed restaurants. Now, is that a catalyst for the stock to move down? Possibly. So I need to be on the lookout to see if we're going to get any kind of reaction from Chipotle. And by the way, the daily chart is not that dissimilar to Apple. So we'll see if we get a false breakout there. Um, Amazon computer. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Amazon. Um, I'm thinking of Apple computer. Um, Amazon also. Um, is this a you know, you definitely have a, well, you also have a 13 cell signal here. Um, now you have a, also, you have a late stage base. Uh, and is that base long enough? The last one, which I think is actually shortable now. In fact, right now I might put a note out on it, uh, is Coach. Coach has been a leader for a very long time. And it just so happens, guess what? You know, you guessed it. You guessed it. It uh, has a 13 monthly sell signal. These are hard to get. Okay, you have to be going up for a very long time to get those. So, um, I think that uh, you know, even if you look at Coach on a traditional basis, oh, 13 weekly sell also. Uh, this is a weekly chart. Is that if we continue and get a B wave? It only needs to go a little bit higher. It just has to be higher than the, than the close of um, eight bars prior to put in a, a B wave. So another week or two, and we'll have it. Um, but uh, a coach looks like a short, uh, and um, I'd be looking to sell that if you're a PM or you own coach. Okay. So uh, let me move to what I think might be uh, well, you know, before I do that, you know, so um, let me just show you a couple of shorts that um, that worked out. Again, we had uh, NTAP as a short uh, at around 50. Look, everybody's shorts really, you know, if your shorts weren't working over the past, <laughs> um, you know, 10 weeks, then, you know, I, I wouldn't short anything anymore. Um, one of the things about shorting, um, is that I that I find people do all the time is that a fundamentalist is going to short based on valuation, and valuation is probably the worst thing to short stocks um, uh, for, in my opinion. It's rare 
if you have, and, and it, I'm talking a momentum stock. If you're trying to short a momentum stock based on valuation, you might as well kiss your money goodbye because the stocks will continue to go higher. Uh, and it's in a lot of times stocks will continue to go higher because the short interest is moving up with the trend. Phil Erlanger kind of best explained or pioneered that concept. Phil Erlanger used to be um, the uh, technical analyst at Advest and at Fidelity, he was their chief technical analyst. And literally you could have thousands and hundreds of thousands of combinations of indicators. But you gotta pick, you know, what you're gonna look at. And he believed that relative strength pretty much crystallizes everything else uh, best. And the second thing that he likes to look at is short interest. So as something is moving up and the short interest is waning, then you know, you might have something. There's a there's a, one of my favorite short patterns, and um, it's definitely an O'Neill style short pattern. And you don't hear too much about that, but there's a very small book out there. It was written quite a while ago uh, on shorting by William O'Neill. Is where you have a break, and then you try to recover in kind of like a, a right arm or a, a, a you know a right arm of a head or a right shoulder of a of a what might be considered like a, a I guess you'd call it a, a big left shoulder, right shoulder, depending on how you're looking at it, um, that extends for a long time and then lets go. And what tends to happen is that you'll go up and through the 50-day movie average three, four, five times. So in this case, you were up once, uh, down through it, up twice, up three times, and then at the last time, four, then you know, it looks like you might have tried it there, but, but uh, you definitely tried it here. And then you usually fail. And you know, that's one of the uh, shorts that we put out on our, on our service right at that last time you tried to make your way back above the, uh, above the 50 day. Um, so we like to show things that are going to happen uh, time to time. But you'll see, uh, if, you, if you see our service, you'll see that. We find these things all the time where you have that, um, you know, if you're in a market where you're going to have a preponderance of these patterns, um, then you'll, you'll find uh, patterns like this. One of the guys that works with us at Spots on Trends is a former uh, William O'Neill employee, he still lives out in Los Angeles, uh, and um, he does a great job. I mean, uh, God, when he, when you know, I, I love it because uh, whenever he talks, it's just like, you know, I got a buy list as hot as, uh, uh, as, hot as, you, can, hot as you can imagine. He's just really great. So uh, I won't tell you his name. He told me not to say his name today, but I don't know. Maybe he's embarrassed about me. Anyway, just going to mention a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, for those of you who came in late, uh, I'm representing Spots on Trends. My name is Jeffrey Spots, Charter Market Technician. Um, although I do manage money, um, I uh, have a, the advisory service, um, so I need to keep those separately, but I'm representing Spots on Trends tonight. I may or may not have a position in any of the stocks that I had mentioned. Um, one of the, some of the things that we do at Spots on Trends are live trade alerts. So we actually will shoot you something that we like. We have the uh, rationale behind the trades, and we're working with some of the guys out of William O'Neill who work for Spots on Trends who come up with these uh, these ideas. 